man cherishes in his heart the ideal of absolute personal freedom. And there are areas of individual liberty where every man is his own lord and master. Here he is free to strike any attitude. Free to speak his mind. Free to express himself forcefully or um, creatively. He is free to choose his fashions and his faith and to indulge his fancies. When he steps out of this private world of personal freedom and comes into contact with his fellow citizens, the common man finds that his liberties have to be curtailed. He finds that he has to curb his caprices and submit himself to social control. He allows himself to be governed. But how and by whom is he to be governed? How much social control should the government exercise? An autocratic government believes in total control. An all-powerful ruler not only tells you where to cross the road, but also what to think, what to say, and what not to say. Mr. Common Man has no legal means of removing such a government from power and any attempt at defiance may not only be futile, but may even be fatal. In a democracy, on the other hand, every citizen has a voice in the process of making the laws that govern him. But it is obvious that direct participation by all citizens <coughs> is impossible. Hence, elections. Men who wish to speak for a group of citizens residing in a particular area or constituency present themselves as candidates. Considering them carefully, the common man makes his choice unaffected by enticements or threats. He exercises his right to vote Votes are cast in absolute secrecy and the candidate who wins the largest number of votes is declared elected. He joins similarly elected representatives from other constituencies to form a government body. It may be a village panchayat or a municipal corporation or a state assembly or the Lok Sabha, which governs the entire nation. All these governments, national, state and local, derive their authority from the voter, 
from Mr. Common Man. And they exist for his benefit. When Mr. Common Man has a problem, he has the right to call his representative and acquaint him of the facts and ask for the government's help. The representative presents the common man's case to his fellow members. Proposals and counter-proposals are made and their pros and cons discussed. Finally, the members vote and the will of the majority prevails. The common man is entitled to many services from the national, state and local governments. Sanitation, transport, housing, electrification, law and order, railways, banking, insurance, steel plants, power projects, the postal service. And who pays for all these services? The common man, of course. by paying his tax dues honestly and promptly. And since it is his money that the government spends, he keeps a careful eye on the government's projects. Mr. Common Man, citizen, voter, taxpayer, and, however indirectly, lord and master of the instruments that govern him. They are as dear to him as that citadel of freedom which he cherishes within his heart. <laughs> 